This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the management of acute liver failure. As in the previous lecture we discussed detailed about the acute liver failure. Now today we are going to discuss the management and first of all in the management we are going to discuss the investigations that we are going to carry out in the acute liver failure. So what are the investigations? First of all, first investigation, very basic investigation you will carry out is the CBC. You will do the electrolytes in the patient. You will do the urine DR. Clear? Urine detail report. Why we are doing electrolytes? Because you know that electrolytes they are imbalanced in the liver failure. Why? Because of the hypoglycemia occur in this patient, um, hypophosphatemia occur, hypo, uh, uh, hypocalcemia occur, hypomagnesemia occur. So these electrolytes you have to see the, that either the electrolytes are dis imbalanced or not. In urine DR you will see that if there is renal problem, any renal problem is there, means they are that the defective liver, the liver failure has it, this liver failure affected the kidneys or not. So you have to rule out this kidney dysfunction by the urine DR. Then, uh, you will do what then you will do the uh, if it is uh, means in order to rule out the cause of the viral hepatitis you will do the hepatitis serology screening you will do the serology screening if for example if it is hepatitis b virus so in the hepatitis b virus we have the antibody igm against the core antigen Clear? This antibody is very uh, specific, very best for the screening of the hepatitis B virus infection. So in this way, uh, hepatitis A virus, hepatitis B virus, this uh, hepatitis we will discuss in detail separately in the uh, upcoming lectures. Then we can also, we have to rule out the autoimmune cause. So in order to rule out the autoimmune cause, we will carry out the antibodies autoimmune antibodies like the anti neutrophil antibody then we will do the test of the anti smooth muscle antibody so this is a uh, uh, to, to rule out the cause of the autoimmune cause so auto in this antibodies we will be discussing detail in the autoimmune hepatitis clear then obviously we will do the coagulation profile and in coagulation profile what you will see because the coagulation factors are deficient so obviously the prothrombin time will be prolonged in these cases clear why because i am just explaining each and every investigation that why we are doing this investigation in the acute liver failure clear so the fourth one is the coagulation profile in which we will see that the prothrombin time it is prolonged then what you will do is the you will do the ultrasound of the abdomen clear ultrasound abdomen you will do and you will also do the doppler of the hepatic vein in order to rule out any uh, you can say uh, you, you you in order to see that hepatic veins they are normal or not and ultrasound to uh, means to find any abnormality in the liver so these are the investigation one thing here i have to tell you that uh, albumin albumin in the acute liver failure may be normal it may be normal initially why because uh, why this is so because the albumin albumin half-life the plasma half-life of the albumin is two weeks the plasma half-life of albumin is two weeks so it means that the albumin will remain in the blood for about two weeks clear for example simple understand it like this this is your liver clear this liver has formed the albumin and it has transferred for example into the blood this is your blood here the albumin has transferred now the liver has destroyed for example the acute liver injury has occurred and the liver is not functioning and it is not forming albumin so now here the albumin is not formed but still this albumin in the blood this will remain here for about two weeks and that is the reason that we will be seeing the albumin which is normal in the in the initially initial cases clear so initially the albumin will be normal in the initial two weeks 
and after two weeks obviously the albumin is not formed by the liver so obviously the albumin will start to decrease after the two weeks clear so uh, this is the investigation that we are going to do in the case of the acute liver failure now how you will uh, manage the patient so what is the management of the acute liver failure see management is also very easy just you have to see the clinical features remember the clinical features and you can easily manage the patient so first of all what you are means treatment so first thing that you are going to do first thing that you are going to do is you have to admit the patient in the icu why you are admitting the patient in the icu because you have to first of all first of all in any emergency you have to maintain the hemodynamic support and the ventilatory support this is very important because you all know from the atls protocol that the a b c d e that protocol so you have to first of all maintain the airway breathing circulation all that so in, that's why we are uh, admitting the patient to the icu in order to maintain his hemodynamic stability and the ventilatory support so first thing you are uh, giving to the icu then the second thing that you are going to give to the patient is the N-acetyl cysteine, intravenous N-acetyl cysteine. Now, why this is basically N-acetyl cysteine is given to all the patients of the acute liver injury, almost all the patients of the acute liver injury, and in the patients of the hepatic encephalopathy grade one and two. Now, what is hepatic encephalopathy? I told you previously, but what are the grades that you will be discussing uh, in the uh, separate lecture where I will be discussing I will be discuss the hepatic encephalopathy separately. So remember, just there are four grades of the hepatic encephalopathy in grade one and grade two. We are going to give the N-acetyl cysteine. So first problem was the hepatic encephalopathy that is treated that is you can say managed by the N-acetyl cysteine. Now why we are giving this N-acetyl cysteine? Basically, for example, consider a patient who is coming to you and the liver damage is due to the paracetamol toxicity. Okay. Now this due to this damage uh, to the liver due to the paracetamol toxicity. Now this patient is given as an acetyl cysteine. What this N acetyl cysteine do? This N acetyl cysteine basically it replenishes the glutathione. The glutathione stores in the liver, and due to which what happens when the glutathione stores are replenished in the liver. So this glutathione, the function of glutathione is to detoxify. So the detoxification function will be improved. So the means you can say the chances will be less, the injury chances will be less and the condition will be less deteriorating. Clear? So this is the, the that's why we are going to give the N-acetyl cysteine and why this N-acetyl cysteine is uh, helpful for the brain activity because uh, the reason is that N-acetyl cysteine also increases the cerebral blood flow clear it also increases the cerebral blood flow so that's why it is also helpful in the hepatic encephalopathy and this also regulates the glutamate functions of the glutamate levels of the brain and that is why it is uh, means helpful for the brain function as well so that's why we are going to give the n-acetyl cysteine then the third problem that was in the clinical feature we studied was the cerebral edema now how you are going to treat this cerebral edema basically first thing you have to do simply is that you have to elevate the patient's head position clear this is for example the uh, bed of the patient clear and this is the head position just consider it this is the head position of the patient so you have to elevate this position you have to elevate the position at about 30 degree first thing you are going to do this in order to relieve the cerebral edema then the second thing you will be giving the iv mannitol this is a very uh, general treatment that we are studying for the cerebral edema this uh, mannitol iv mannitol is generally used everywhere wherever the cerebral edema is there you will be using the iv mannitol clear so cerebral edema you have treated the cerebral edema as well now the fourth thing that is the coagulopathy a coagulopathy i told you that there is coagulopathy means the clotting factors they are deficient bleeding tendency is there so how you will treat this coagulopathy coagulopathy is uh, treated simply by giving the vitamin k 
Why we are giving vitamin K? Because there are certain factors that are dependent upon the vitamin K, certain clotting factors that are basically dependent upon the vitamin K. That's why we are giving here vitamin K. We will also give the fresh frozen plasma, which contain certain substances that are helps in the clotting. Then uh, we have also we can give the platelets that helps to stop the bleeding. Clear? you can say that prevents the bleeding so in this way the coagulopathy of the patient is corrected then we have the how you will treat the electrolyte imbalance we have also the electrolyte imbalance in the patient fifth point is the electrolyte imbalance now how you will treat this electrolyte imbalance simply electrolyte imbalance uh, was the hypomagnesemia, hypo, um, you can say phosphatemia, this you are going to treat this as well as you are going to treat the hypoglycemia in the patient by giving the dextrose simply. Clear? You are going to give the dextrose to the patient. Then, for uh, one thing here very important to tell you that the, what is the treatment of short at acute liver failure? So treatment of this is very important point. The treatment of choice for the liver failure is liver transplantation. That's why we are doing this, uh, all the symptomatic treatment. This you can see I told you all that the treatment I told you is all the symptomatic treatment. So the treatment of choice is simply the liver transplantation, but it is not so simple. Clear? There are many complications that, that is very hard for the liver to transplant. There must be a donor. So that's why it is not very easy. So first of all, first thing that we are going to do is you have to manage the symptomatically. You have to manage the patient symptomatically until and unless there is a donor is arranged and all the arrangement of the liver transplantation is there. So you have to treat the patient this way. Then if for example, the cause is hepatitis, so you will treat accordingly means for hepatitis B we have certain drugs we will study there separately if hepatitis C is there you will study hepatitis C drugs you will give the patient hepatitis C drugs if the cause becomes autoimmune then you will be giving corticosteroids to the patient so in this way whatever the cause is you have to treat that accordingly clear so this is about the management of acute liver failure now last thing is that what are the poor prognostic factor of the acute liver failure what are the poor prognostic factor of the acute liver failure? So we have the poor prognostic factor for the acute liver failure. Now this poor prognostic factor, they are basically divided. We have divided them into the non-paracetamol cases and paracetamol cases clear now first of all we will be discussing the non paracetamol cases see in this if the if the prothrombin time is greater than 100 seconds then it means that this is a poor prognostic factor and the uh, there there would be a poor prognosis of the this acute liver injury then number second point if this is there then it is poor prognostic factor now you can say i have mentioned this is point one or i am writing here or there are five points five factors among these five factors if three of them are present it will be pointing towards the acute uh, you can say poor prognostic factor now what are those points those points are that the you can say time from the jaundice to the hepatic encephalopathy is greater than seven days as i told you in the previous lecture that we have divided the acute liver injury into the three types hyper acute acute and the sub acute so this one type is is in the acute cases or you can say in the sub acute cases if it is greater than tw uh, 28 days so greater than seven days it is acute cases so jaundice to hepatic encephalopathy if it is greater than seven then this is the one factor then we have the age if the age of the patient is less than 10 year or if it is greater than 40 years then this this is also a factor that can also be poor uh, leading to the poor prognosis then we have the blue ribbon concentration if blue ribbon concentration is greater than 300 millimole per liter then this will be also a 
poor prognostic factor then we have the drug induced drug induced and non ae that is simply i told you that is called as a cryptogenic so that is cryptogenic liver injury clear so these are basically the four uh, factors that we have discussed right now and the last one here would be the fifth one sorry these are the this one is fourth and this one is fifth that the prothrombin time is greater than 60 seconds so among these five of them if any three of them is any three of them are present then it will be called it as a we will be calling call, we will be suppose it as that it is can lead to the poor prognosis so these are the poor prognostic factors this alone is a poor prognostic factor among these five three of them any three of them present it will be uh, means called it as a we will call it as a poor prognostic factor and the last one or here i am writing or here i am writing or or you can say factor 5 activity less than 15 percent and hepatic encephalopathy grade 3 and grade 4 so these are the poor prognostic factor in the cases of the non paracetamol uh, cases clear alone this one in these five three of them are present then this is poor prognosis or this one clear so these are basically three points that uh, in the para non paracetamol cases then we have the paracetamol cases now in paracetamol cases we also have one the first point in the paracetamol cases is the arterial ph if the arterial ph is less than 7.3 it means that it is acidosis then you will be considering it as a, it as a poor prognostic factor or or now second point now what is second point in second point we have the three things basically in second point we have the three things the first thing is that serum creatinine serum creatinine greater than 300 micromole per liter clear serum creatinine value if it is greater than uh, 300 micromole per liter then this is your first point first point of this then the second point for this is the prothrombin time if it is greater than 60 second and the third is the grade 3 and 4 hepatic and cephalopathy so this is the three points sorry this is not 60 seconds it is 100 seconds so these three plus so remember this that in the paracetamol poisoning cases you have to see the arterial ph if it is less than acid uh, less than 7.3 acidosis you will consider it as a poor prognostic factor or if it is not present if it is normal for example then you will check this one if the serum creatin value is greater than 300 plus plus clear plus prothrombin time is greater than 100 second plus grade 3 and 4 hepatic encephalopathy these all three together they will be considered at uh, considered as a poor prognostic factors for the paracetamol cases so this is all about the acute liver failure we have discussed this in the two lectures in first lecture we'll discuss detail about the what is acute liver failure what are the clinical features and all that in the second lecture today we discuss the management investigations and the poor prognostic factors so if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section thank you so much Allah Hafiz.